Yeah, I see. You had me worried there for a second. Well, let me find out I'm boring you already. No, baby. I'm, I heard everything you said. Oh, okay. So I mean, you all cool with me having big booty strippers at my bachelor party. See? That's why I was marrying you. Negro. Don't get hurt now. I know I spaced out for a minute, but I heard everything you said. Oh, I'm just playing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was cool for your brother to pay for the honeymoon, though. I know, right? Yeah. I was not expecting him to do that. Mm. <laughs> Out of all the shit that he put us through, he should be paying for the whole damn wedding. Mm, I know. <laughs> but you know what? It was sweet of him. Yeah. Oh, is he gonna bring his uh his little boyfriend to the wedding? <laughs> no, stop. What? You are not gonna do that. <laughs> Mom. Stop insinuating that my brother is gay. Baby, look, I'm just trying to tell you, okay? Ain't no straight man in the history a straight man gonna sit here and try to tell me that my deal is thick as hell, okay? <laughs> I mean, you do know that's a whole man playing a woman in a dress, right? Oh my God, he was just joking, okay? Mm -hmm. And the other guy that kept on laughing and co-signing off his corny ass jokes. Nah, them niggas smashing. We're doing something gay. I laugh at your corny ass jokes. Mm. You also laughed at the fact that I said I was going to marry that ass one day. And look, here we are. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but hey, if my brother wants to bring his boyfriend and his thick ass <laughs> Medea to the wedding, they all invited. <sighs> well, that settles it then. Now all we got to do is to send invitations out to everybody and get us a wedding going. Mm. I'm excited. Mm. <laughs> Ray, oh my God. I'm so sorry to disturb you, um, but I am such a huge fan. Thank you. Your work is such an inspiration to me. It really changed my life. Oh, I really appreciate that. Is it possible if I can get a picture with you? Sure. Is it possible if you could take this picture? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're yeah, welcome, no sweetheart. <laughs> okay, look at you. Check you out. That's mm -hmm. a famous, honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All jealous now. <laughs> <clears throat> so you uh, you gonna be okay for tonight? Yeah, I'll be okay. Thanks for letting me use your car while mine's in the shop. You know I don't mind taking you up there. Okay, I mean Jasmine's with the babysitter, which means. We baby free for tonight. I know. Okay. That's okay. I just need to get this over with, so. You know, I just need her signature and then I'm on to another chapter. No pun intended. Well, I know it's been a long time since you've seen her, but it it wouldn't hurt if you at least invite her to the wedding. Oh. <laughs> it's just a thought. Ah, uh, yeah. I just, um, <laughs> I just, I just uh, want to get what needs to be done out the way and just leave it at that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to get this train so I can make it to downtown. So you let me know if you need anything. Okay. Love you. Love
Hello? How far are you? I'm on the road now. I didn't ask you that. I said, how far are you? I'm about 30 minutes away, okay? Look, I left an hour ago. There was a lot of traffic. I should have left earlier. <sighs> Look, what's up? What's the problem? I don't like waiting on people. I got things to do. Now, either you hurry your ass up or you can take your ass home and we can forget about this whole situation. I'm on my way! No, not yet. I do not want to see this woman. Babe, you got this, okay? But don't let those thoughts get into your head. Okay, you are the strongest woman I know. And when this is all over, you'll be home in a few hours. You'll be home with me and the baby, okay? I just don't know why she has to be so petty and spiteful. She knows what she's doing. Telling me that the only way she would sign is if I come see her personally. This is some bullshit. This is what I have a lawyer for. Babe, like I said, okay? All you gotta do is just get this done. You'll never have to see her again. Okay? Okay. Well, how are things at the site? Uh, it's going kinda okay. Why kinda okay? Well, Tammy is over here with a new guy that she's dating and he's not really feeling me. I got a weird vibe from him, but... Uh, hey, I gotta go, so just uh, let me know when you make it there, okay? Hey, Clarence. Yeah, babe. I love you. I love you, too. just made it. Great. Hey, quick question. Where are the forms that you... Uh, um, uh, check in the back seat. It should be in the backpack. Uh, which one? Man, I don't even know, man. I mean, one of those bags is my little brother's, and I guess he forgot it when I picked him up after trying to ditch school that day. Man, it's, it's like he's becoming more and more distant and distracted lately, but look, just, just put it back in the trunk. Okay. All right. Bye.
Um, I'm at your door. Don't knock on my goddamn door like that. It's open. Are you? Do not rush me as long as it took you to get here. Now look who it is, Little Miss Famous Book Writer. Hmm, I see you cut your hair. Looks nice. Hmm. Thank you. Um, so, here's the paperwork. We can just discuss this and, um, I can let you get back on with your evening. Why in the hell would I sign off on some bullshit like that? See, I knew you were gonna pull this shit. Don't think I don't know what you up to. Who the fuck do you think you are? You write these self-help books thinking you're helping people talking about your little sorry ass life. You're not special. And you have the nerve to want me to sign off on my husband's journals so you can publish it in your book? He was my fucking father. He left those journals for me. But you took them anyway, knowing that he left them for me. All I know is you like everybody else. Wanna make a dollar off his name and I'm not gonna let you do that. So why have me come all the way out here? Why, for what? so I can look you in your face and tell you no. That's okay. You'll be hearing from my lawyer anyway because I'm gonna get what belongs to me. But let's not fool ourselves. We all know why you really here. And you didn't come all the way here just to get my damn signature. 
and this ain't about your daddy's journals. You came all the way here so you can tell me some shit. <laughs> Trying to get some closure or something. Digging up the past so you can get on with your future. Now, now you all grown up, all sophisticated. Writing that self-help shit. <laughs> nah. You came all the way here to prove something to yourself. You're not that weak, scared little girl that's no longer scared of me. Oh! And by the way, don't think I don't know who the monster is you write in those books. I fucking made you better. I was a child. I made you ready for this world. I was a child. I fucking made you stronger. I was a fucking child! I was only a child. And you did things to me that no human should ever experience. You took away my innocence. You raped me! And I had to live with the fact that my own stepmother was molesting me. You let those men molest me. I don't have to deal with that pain, that torture. And to think I was the one who felt shame. And remember what you told me? You said that if I told anybody that you would blame it all on my father. And they would take him away from me. Why did you do those things to me? Answer me! I hated you. I hated how much he loved you. It was daddy's little girl. He's always bragging about how perfect you were. You were not shit. The best day of my life was when you went and lived with your grandmother. Hell, you should be thanking me that I exposed you at a young age to how fucked up this life can be. <laughs> my mother did it to me, and I did it to you. So now you can go write some more stupid ass books about that. You're a fucking monster. If my father only knew the type of things you did to me. You know, it's interesting that you say that. Because your father was a very weak man. Don't you? When it was all said and done. Don't you dare speak that way about him. I mean, he began to change when you left. He became more depressed and is wondering why you're acting out. And with you out the picture, your ass is still in the picture. And you know, you had this knack for writing. I give you that. You, you were writing those journals that he gave you for your birthday. You think you, you be like other little girls and play with Barbies and shit. But you decided to write about our interactions in those journals. And you left them behind. And he read them. <laughs> You know, that 
motherfucker had the nerve to bring that shit to me. I knew he was gonna be take those books straight to the police. They didn't say that to me. And I knew that's what he was gonna do. I knew right then and there it was over. He was gonna leave me. I could I could see his love for me just gone. But you wanna know what's so funny about this? As much as I hated you, in that moment, I hated him just as much. <laughs> so uh, I had to do what I had to do. What are you talking about? You know, your father, as famous as he was, <laughs> always had this pattern to what he, what he eats, what he drinks. Always was a man about his wine. So, uh, I had to opt it a little bit. What you trying to say? I think you know what I'm saying. I want you to say it. You didn't honestly think that I was going to throw my life away over those books? Fuck that. It's been 20 years. And here we are, face to face. And you bring a gun. I don't care who you think you are. You still the same weak little bitch that will remain a rape victim. You, Miss Perfect. I damaged goods. You know what? I honestly feel sorry for you. You're the one who's the victim. See, I have someone who loves me. And I love him as well. And he gave me a beautiful baby girl that I will always protect and never let anything harm her. Never show her the evil and sick things you showed me. She'll never know you existed. I don't want to ever see you anywhere near my family. Bitch. Fuck your baby. What did you just say? I said, fuck your baby. She's going to experience the same shit you went through. I see to that. I'm going to always be a part of your life, whether you like it or not. You want to threaten me? Till you lose all types of custody to that little bastard. I will go to every TV, every radio station, every outlet. Bitch, I'll destroy your character. And you know they will listen to me. You want to know why? Huh? You want to know why? Because I'm her fucking grandmother. 
and I'll raise her 10 times as worse than you was. Now, what you got to say about that? Who the fuck you call? 911, what's the nature of your emergency? Um, I just heard gunshots across the street at 1025 Southwestern. Matt, what's your name? Hello, I'm Renata Walsh. I played Rachel in Thou Shall Not Kill Yet. I'm Sharice Eaglin, and I play the role of a stepmother. Mm. I'm Patrick Deal, and I play Clarence in Thou Shall Not Kill Yet. Oh my gosh, what I thought of the film and the script was... <laughs> well, when I read the script, I was like, whoa. This is, um, this is a little, uh, too familiar, you know, um, in so many ways. What did I think about the film and the script? Hell, it, it was amazing. <laughs> the film itself was amazing. The script, I remember when I got the script and I was reading it and as I got to the stepmother role, I was like, whoa boy. Wow, um, it was so uniquely written till I said to myself, oh, I got to do this. You know, I kept going back and forth, like, wait a minute, I'm scared of this script, but I'm not, but I'm scared. But I loved it, and um, man, the film, after seeing it come to life, yeah, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm speechless, actually, <laughs> I am. One of the things that this film does well is it shows that we all have demons, but the most important thing about it is that we can't keep fighting our demons. At the end of the day, we have to learn to live above them because that's when we can learn to um, live our lives the way we want to and learn to forgive in the right ways. And um, you'll see that ev eventually, you know, once we keep it in and just let it bottle it up, we can snap just like that. Why did I pick this script? I picked this script because it's, it's all so familiar in a lot of our homes. And it's always a faux pas, you know, don't talk about it, touch about it. You know, people don't need to know what's going on with you and um, just get over it, hush about it. It happened, it's over with. And so since it's so hushed, and that becomes a stigma when you get older and you get all these Me Too people out here that are scared to like talk about sexual abuse or um, sexual harassment and just being talked to or touched the wrong way. They bring it out later and everybody's like, oh, that never happened. But 99.9% .9 of the time it did. And that person just, um, just got the courage to say it at that time. So um, why I chose the script is, you know, it just hits close and that's all I'll say. And um, I just had to do it. It was an outlet and it was, it, it was just perfect for me to do it. And thank you for asking me to do it, Blaze. What do I want people to take away from this film? To understand it's okay. You know, it's always, this subject have always been such, such a subject that, you know, you have to be quiet or don't say anything. And better yet, it's always looked upon the male. No one would ever think a woman would do certain things. And in all actuality, yes, but the thing is, 
it's hush hush it's taboo you can't say that you know so yes please watch you know listen to the message if it's close to you or hit close to home or even if you experienced it it's okay to go talk to somebody there's nothing wrong with you it's okay trust me it hit me close to home as well what was it like working with Mimi um, she's she knows what she wants working under Mimi Rivers direction was like phenomenal first of all like she helped me so much um, she always was very like comp she, you know she always complimented me on set and stuff but I was like no I need you to bring it out I need you to I need you to do me a favor because um, really working in a couple of the scenes where I had to be really emotional going through family stuff right now with my grandmother I had her come and pull some stuff out of me so I can really really dig deep because you know sometimes it's it's hard to get so emotional when you're having fun doing what you do <laughs> you already said the mom's the car you come to her you're like you know it's interesting that you say that you know your father was a very weak man when I talk to But bringing it to life, um, that's what I love to do. So Mimi Rivers was excellent. I, I would definitely work under her again. My name is Mimi Rivers. The name of this film is Thou Shall Not Kill Yet. And I'm, of course, the director. What was it like directing these actors to get in the mood for this particular script? It was a challenge. I must say it was a challenge because these roles definitely needed that, that tweak it. Like they had to give it to you so you can really feel it. When you're dealing with a script and you gotta feel it, you need the actors to bring it. You seen it, we pulled it off. What was my experience working with Young Blaze? Hmm. Freaking awesome, <laughs> that's all I can say. You know, I've worked with Blaze in the past and I, I know his work and his work has always just kept me in awe. You know, and I, how did he do this? What? I didn't know he did that. He is absolutely, absolutely one of the most amazing, wonderful cinematographers that I've ever worked with in my career. And I have been doing this for a little bit over 20 years. And I worked with a lot of good cinematographers, but this, this, this brother here, his magic is just off the chain. He's amazing. I go by the name of Young Blaze. Uh, Maurice Clopton is my name, but people know me as a, a rapper that does music, production, all that cool stuff. And um, this is my film, Thou Shall Not Kill Yet. What did I think of the script when Blaze handed it to me? Of course, for my direction, I thought this was above and beyond who he is. He continues to write over the top. And I knew this was something different for us to, to tackle. I just couldn't wait to, to start shooting. I was just thirsty for it. This film, when I, when, I, when I wrote this film, I was trying to test to see how far I can kind of take it, how, you know, the dynamics of my, my talents. Because I had did a, a film called uh, Community Outreach, then another one called Always, oh, That's Just Your Brother. And this one, I was like, you know what, I want to see if I can kind of create something that was like, you know, really deep. The subject matter was pretty, pretty dark and it has a person feeling like, man, you know, I wonder what's gonna happen next. So I had a lot of fun with writing the script and um, I wanna say the whole dynamics of it was just basically testing myself to see how far I could push it, to see what I can kind of create and take it, make it a little bigger. So it was cool working with my cousin Mimi. We was, we, we had some challenges, but we, we definitely had fun with this one. So uh, other than that, man, that was how this one went. Working with cinematography with Blaze. He's a phenomenal DP. I, I must say this man, to be self-taught, y'all better watch out out there. Watch out because his turnaround time is threatening. That's one thing I must say. And I just like working with him because being once an actress, I know what we don't like. We need time, time, time. We want our projects. We want our work. We want to see what we've done. 
he delivers that and he delivers it on time. My turnaround time is crazy. I like to create like, I, I guess you could say all together, put it realistically, without the gap in time as far as we had to wait because of other people's schedule, realistically, it took me about a week and a half to edit all this and get it done, completed, finished. Being on set with him and actually working with him, that man has an eye like an eagle for sure. Um, there was a lot of shots in the film that was just um, immaculate to me and, and things that was just flowing well all, all because of his craft and, and, and the way he works with the camera, things like that was something that I was looking for that in, in, just, in just this whole journey of my career. Haven't seen anybody work uh, cinematography the way he has in, in 20 years of me doing this acting thing. And, and I really applaud him for, for really, you know, putting his magic on the project, his touch on the project, and um, don't understand why he's not famous yet. So <laughs> hopefully his name will go out because he's very important to this industry for sure. Working with Mimi Rivers, I mean, that's my cousin, love her to death. I'd say that she's really like, she knows what she wants. She's really straightforward and bold, and I love it. She don't hold back. So, and plus by her having a lot of things already on her background as far as being an actress and modeling and everything like that. So she has firsthand experience of understanding what it takes to bring out a performance of somebody. So, and it was times I'd be like, yo, cuz I, I need you to bring this out of this person. So my vision can definitely hit the screen the way I want it to do. And she killed it. And I think when it was all said and done, man, you know, it, this, this boils down to a team effort. So I don't believe that I would have been able to kind of have the results that we have without her because it boils down to her seeing, you know, me telling her my vision, her understanding it and taking it, translating it to the actors and being a dope director. I love working on the Young Blaze. Um, we got tired and we got, but the Young Blaze, he's, he's so evenly emotional the whole time. He's not like, look, you gotta do this, you, you gotta do that. He's just like, look, you know, just need one more shot. We're just gonna get it, we're gonna get it this time. You know, he's just so calm. I love working on the Young Blaze. And, um, you know, I would definitely work on the Young Blaze again. You know, he works magic, phenomenal. I mean, look at the work. <laughs> like I said, man, you know, I just wanna create and make some more dope content. Whether it's music, whether it's films, whether it's photography, whatever it is, when it comes to me and creating, there's no rules to this. So I hope you guys enjoyed the film.